Alrighty then, welcome again to Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And today I am going to do a real quick uh, review on my next um, project, which is the Panther Ausf D, the new tool by uh, Tamiya. This one was tooled in 2015. And I've actually had this one for quite a while, but got caught up in uh, other builds. So this one's just been sitting on the, on the shelf. So I finally got caught up with everything, and this is the next kit I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to do a real detailed, you know, in-depth review. There's plenty of those on YouTube that, uh, you know, talk maybe talk about accuracy and talk about, you know, whatever. I'm just going to kind of briefly go through it like I normally do. Um, so, you know, this shouldn't take too long. So, uh, you know, first thing, we got the typical Tamiya box art. I think it's been the same type of box art for, you know, 40 years. I don't know. But it's nice. Um, in the box, typical stuff. We got the uh, instruction booklet. Um, what can I say? And it's nice because it's in a booklet form. It's not the big, long map fold-out type deal. Uh, just looking briefly and quickly through the uh, instructions, um, you know, it's this, it's typical stuff. There's not really a whole lot to talk about. One thing that I have noticed just now that I really like about the way they are doing, Tamiya is doing their, um, the way their kits, their upper holes fit together. And I mentioned this on the, uh, um, well, let's see, the uh, Sherman is the fact that they use um, kind of a slide together type system for the upper hole to the lower hole. Um, as you can see here on the back plate of the, uh, the, the vehicle, there's a spot where there's one of uh, Tamiya's lovely poly caps like they use for the wheels fits into a uh, fitting on the back plate. Then in the front of the lower hull, there's this like wedge-shaped um, piece that fits in the lower hull. And the upper hull, the front slides into that, and in the back there's a pin that slides into that. And if this is anything like the uh, engineering on the Sherman, it's going to fit together really nice. There was no seams at all. I did not have to cement the top and the bottom. And for me personally, I like the fact that you can take it off. Um, it makes it easier for painting. And I guess it doesn't matter because, you know, I can leave it apart and then glue it together. But um, I did have to take the upper hole off the lower hole when I decided to go for some mud effects underneath that I hadn't originally planned on doing. So, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a neat feature and the engineering is such that it you can't even tell that it's not been glued anyway um, this is the first time I've really seen this in Tamiya instructions is this shows the uh, some of the aftermarket items that you can get well not aftermarket but accessory items that you can get for uh, the Tamiya kit um, such as a metal gun barrel and um, detailed breech you can get that. That's a set uh, number one two six six four. Then there's a track set uh, one two six six five. It's individual link tracks. And then you have the photo etch um, grill set. And then German tank engine maintenance crew set, which comes with this big drop-in engine um, component. And those are kind of nice. Now, there's been a lot of people that have complained that, you know, why why aren't these just packaged with the vehicle? And I kind of agree with it, and I kind of don't. Uh, that would add cost to the kit. Um, the one thing that I think they should package with the kit is the uh, grill set. Because, I mean, all, all Panthers, as far as I know, need the grills. Um, but... You know, whatever. It's not really that much. Uh, the metal barrel. Um, I've used metal barrels and I've used plastic barrels. And the new tool, uh, you know, slide molded barrels. They're they're pretty good. You know, I would I would do a metal barrel if it came with it. But you know, I didn't want to buy one of those. And this seems kind of pointless to me. In that, you know, you're getting this really nice detailed 
breech assembly and you can't even see it and there's no interior on the rest of the turret so I you know why not just the barrel I don't know but you know some people might like that and it's kind of cool I mean I guess you could see it through the hatch a little bit if you didn't have a figure in it um, the tracks the tracks um, they look pretty nice the only thing I don't like about the tracks that I've seen from reviews that people have done is there are a lot there are two um, ejector pin marks on every single link and to me that's just that's a lot of I mean it's already tedious enough cutting it all the, at all the points and filing those down um, on both parts of the of each individual link so having to fill and or sand those ejector pin marks uh, that dog just ain't gonna hunt so but you know it's nice to offer this stuff and once these are done I just what I should say is I don't have the patience to do this kind of thing with all those ejector pin marks. I mean, to me, that just seems unnecessary. Um, but I've seen some of these completed, and they do look really nice. So, you know, you got the hollow guide horns, the outside, de you know, the, the surface detail is great. Uh, the engine set, this would be really nice um, if you're doing, like, a maintenance diorama or something like that. So, anyway, that's the, the, the extra stuff that comes with it. Then the rest of it's just typical instructions, putting together 50,000 wheels, which I just, uh, not the best thing, but hey, you gotta do it. Um, then you've got, let's see, more wheels, um, just, you know, the usual stuff. So there's not really a whole lot of sense in going. This is kind of nice. Um, I know a lot of kits don't have this, and you can see through these grills somewhat, so it's nice they've included the cooling fans. Um, to give it something underneath the uh, the access hatches uh, on the engine on the back of the um, upper hull. Um, everything looks good. Tra -la 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 -la. Let's see. One thing I want to see now. See, this is I brought this up in my Sherman, in my recent Sherman build. It's a new toolkit as well. Why can't to me always do this? You have separate grab handles for the hatches instead of just molding the wedge on there. It's obvious they have the technology because they're doing it on this one. You know, so um, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Again, it's not that hard to shave, you know, the the incorrect things off and make wire handles, but why not just why not just do this on all of them? So that's just my little that's my two cents worth. So anyway, um, so that's cool. They come with the uh, separate handles. I like that. Um, everything else looks good. Typical, you know, instructions. So, no need to go over all of it. Uh, okay, so that's the instructions. Then we got this really nice, um, kind of heavy, nice, heavy paper stock, glossy paper stock, um, background information uh, in Japanese, um, in English, French, uh, German. Uh, it's really nice. I mean, the, this illustration here showing, you know, what the different parts are. You know, you got smoke dischargers, you know, driver's observation point port, forward machine gun pistol port, and you know, it just kind of labels. That's kind of nice, especially for somebody that maybe just be getting, might just be getting into uh, armor kits um, they know what things are called so if they have questions or they just you know want to improve their knowledge on the vehicles it, it's right there so that's pretty nice then we got these excellent color call outs and, and I like the fact that they do them in color I mean it really gives you an idea how uh, the vehicle should look and these are all tricolor schemes um, I will be doing one of them just don't know which one. Um, they're all pretty much the same, really, except for, um, I mean, the, the pattern's a little bit different on some of them. Like, for instance, this one, the, the colors, the camouflage colors on top of the yellow are a little bit, you know, maybe thinner. You know, than these, these are a little bit thicker. Um, but, you know, so I will be doing one of these, obviously. And then there's some nice photographs here. 
of, uh, of an actual vehicle. So that's, that's pretty nice. So anyway, that's the instructions and the color callouts. Um, as far as the, the kit contents, um, these are the uh, gluable flexible styrene tracks. And I have to say that the detail on these is just, it's really, really, really good. Um, there's no, there's no flash, there's no seam lines. The only thing that, you know, if you wanted to complain about something are these little teeny tiny nipples or whatever you want to call them sticking out there, I guess, from, from the, uh, injecting the material into the molds. Um, those could be easily cleaned up and because the way the wheels run on the tracks, um, you wouldn't even notice that. So, you know, these tracks are nice. Now, the big drawback to these kind of tracks, obviously, and you can really see it in this illustration right here, is the tracks on these vehicles have a lot of sag. Okay. And th those of you who've built a lot of these, you already know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Okay, this is kind of geared, you know, like, like I've said in my other videos, I kind of like to gear a little bit toward beginners so you know there's that um, German tracks generally uh, are I guess they call them dead tracks they don't stay tight They're, they don't have any kind of tension system on them you can adjust the idler to uh, you know adjust this sag but there's specifications for it and all that kind of stuff but they all have this sag and that is pretty near impossible to replicate with um, these kind of tracks. I mean, you can, but it's super tricky and it generally comes comes out looking kind of wonky. Now, in this case, since this tank has side skirts on it, you wouldn't even see the sag or lack thereof on the tracks. So you could get away with using these tracks, okay? Some people might bug, some people might not. If you're modeling it with uh, missing plates on the side skirts, you'd probably want to do it more toward the back so you don't see that there's no sag in the track, okay? So, um, as far as the uh, parts, I see this, I've had this kit forever and I've never opened it up in anticipation of doing this dandy review. So the first thing is the turret. Um, it's got nice uh, imperfections in, in, the, in the rolled steel armor plate. Um, looks really nice. Weld marks are really nice. Uh, the detail on this, uh, I think it's called a bullet splash guard. Very nice. Um, just nicely molded. It's got the, the nice uh, texture in there from where the uh, the armor plate in the back, you know, it, it interlocks with the sides and it's got, you know, serrations in it from, um, being cut, torch cut, so that's pretty nice. Uh, then we have the upper hull. And I have to tell you, this was a real chore keeping all this stuff in the bag until I did this review after all these months because I like to dig into these boxes. Uh, again, very nice detail. More texture on the uh, glossy plate. The front plate there. Uh, nice, you know, again, torch cut. Nice bolt detail. Nice bolt detail, welds, you know, interlocking welds. You, know, you got these welds that are on the outside edge and the welds on the inside edge here where the top plate meets the sides. More interlocking plate in the back. So that's really nice. Um, lower hull, hull tub, whatever you want to call it. 
Same thing, very nice detail. And I'm going to say something right here. Some people may, you know, want to cyber slap me, but I've never really understood why people like or dislike lower hole detail. Now, some people like it, and that's fine, and it looks really good, and I dig it. It's cool. But, unless you're modeling your tank on a diorama that's flipped over, you're not really going to see this when it's sitting still. You know, that, that's my own personal opinion. It's great that they add the detail. Why not? Um, I've just never seen it as a deal breaker on a kit. And there's some people I've heard that just really are disappointed when there's no detail on the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to open these. You know, there's the uh, radiators I was telling you about, fans, cooling fans, the wheels, very nice. Uh, spare track links, those look really good. Um, I'm going to open it up. I mean, the, the molding on that stuff is really, really fine. That looks really good. You know, the bolt detail on the wheels looks very good. The uh, caps that cover the axles. Um, just man, it's just really nice. And you know, some some of this stuff, like right here, these clevis hooks. I mean, there is no, there's there's no seam, there's no seam around the outside edge. On older kits, you can have like some pretty gnarly seams, sometimes flash, and sometimes instead of the the two parts of the. Um, the two halves of the item, you know, half of it's in one mold, half of it's in the other, it'll be slightly off, and that's just a pain. But, you know, that's one of the bennies of, of new tool stuff. It's very, very nice. I mean, that looks really good. Set that aside. Then we got the back plate here the back of the turret, um, the figures. I'm gonna be using these figures. I'm trying to improve on my uh, figure painting, so I'm gonna use these again. Um, hatch, cover, the, the texture on these front, the driver and the bow gunners. Um, the texture on these hatches is really nice. Texture on the uh, On the mantlet, very nice. I mean, it's just, man, really good looking stuff. Um, so we got that. And then the last piece, the last uh, sprue. Huge. We got the turret bottom. Uh, the fenders, uh, the side skirts, fenders, all that type of stuff. Again, really nice, man. These got some super nice detail on the front here. The fan covers and the, the, the gun travel lock. It's got a little bit of chain molded on there. And again, see this is where you can tell a nice new tool kit. Of good quality there are just virtually no seam lines at all on these parts so they've done a really good job on this on this kit and I'm really looking forward to building this one I haven't, I haven't built a panther I've built one panther my entire life and that was the first to me a kit I ever built it was uh, the old panther a and uh, it was you know I mean I thought it was the most awesome kit and I've found out since it's just got all kinds of problems but it was a lot of fun, but man, this smokes it. So there's that. Now, what else comes with the kit is you've got uh, got a bundle of wire here. Not sure what that's for. I'll find out. Uh, rope, some string for the tow rope, and then the poly caps for the wheels and uh, that whole part I was talking about. Um, we've got the decals. 
and but uh, you know it's got some nice they're all in register they look really good really accurate their decals not a whole lot to talk about okay so we got that now the last part I want to talk about and this is a first for me these kits lately are a lot of firsts and that is finally cracked and purchased well first I got the uh, the grill set it's the actual Tamiya grill set I got that um, really nice fine mesh and it looks like interwoven mesh as opposed to just flat with holes in it so it's got a nice texture to it really nice parts there so I cracked and bought some individual link tracks workable track links these are Panther tracks by Kaizen and uh, a big um, reason I got these I wanted to go with some individual link tracks and I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money on them and I didn't want you know especially for my first set so um, one of the YouTube channels I follow Adam Mann he did a uh, tiger track by uh, Kaizen he did a review on them and they looked really good so I thought you know what I'm gonna give these things a shot uh, they really seem to be good quality there's been a lot of uh, conjecture as to what they're made out of because on the side of the box it says box contains 192 pieces vinyl track links main material ABS plastic and metal which is the pins so I don't know what you get in the box you've got these are the guide horn sections that glue onto the track sections and there is a lot of them in here um, how many did it say there was 192 pieces so there's a lot of them. no ejector pin marks perfectly smooth and flat the only thing I'll have to deal with is cleaning up the sprue gate uh, attachment points which should be no problem I have a really good pair of nippers to make it a lot easier and then there's also in the bag it's in the bottom of the bag here brass rod for connecting the links together so this should be an adventure but after Adam Mann's review and reading some more reviews, um, you know, print reviews, I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give these a shot. And they are left and right-handed, so I'll have to make sure I pay attention to that. So that is everything I have for the Panther. I'm going to be starting that pretty quick. So watch for updates, um, and we'll see how this goes. So, current project, Panther D, new tool from Tamiya, getting ready to get started on it, so keep an eye out and I will post updates as I can, probably won't go step by step, but I'll, uh, I'll do some updates once in a while, kind of go through the build. Especially once I get to some of the stuff I haven't uh, I haven't used before, like these tracks. So anyway, that's it. Stay tuned for more on the Panther D. And thanks for watching. Plastic models by a regular dude.